Wow, after that, it's, it's hard to really follow that. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our June 27th service. And uh, welcome to the last service of being officiated by our beloved pastor. Um, uh, a couple of notes before we get going. Session has approved people being back in the sanctuary. It approved them a couple of weeks ago. But while you're in the sanctuary, you must remain masked. And uh, you may say, you can't hear me? Is that the I'll, I think I'll start again. Welcome, everyone. Um, while we're in the sanctuary, you should, you must be masked. And you, uh, if, whether you're vaccinated or not, and uh, you may sing with your mask on. And we encourage you to sing with your mask on. Um, there's a special note today about seating, and I'm going to read it. This is a special occasion where we are expecting a larger than usual attendance. And as we have, we are uncomfortable turning people away, we have suspended the social distancing we had laid out in parts of the sanctuary. We are still aware that some people here may not be vaccinated or, or some who have been vaccinated are immunocompromised and still may not wish to sit close to others who are not part of the family unit. For them, we have maintained distant seating on the west side of the sanctuary. Uh, please do not break through the tape that is designating which views to leave them. We must rely on each of you using your best judgment regarding where you sit and how close you are to others. If insufficient distance, distant seating is available, uh, please see each end. Uh, EJ over there, or an usher. The ushers will assist you, uh, and the ushers are wonderful. We thank you for your cooperation during the service and continuing during the outdoor reception. All. Um, Wednesday's morning Bible study on Zoom uh, will take place on June 30th. 10.30, it's, there's some things that you just can't tell. That's one of them. The Wednesday evening discussion group is on vacation until September. Plan to join us when we resume. There are no beacons envelopes in the boxes here, but there are beacons envelopes in the pews. Please feel free to take the green beacons envelopes from there and contribute generously to the wonderful work of the beacons. And you may also use uh, one of the cards in, in the uh, in the pew if you wish to make a contribution to the uh, food cover. On behalf of the Interfaith Food Cover, the deacons request contributions of canned fruit for the month of June. So if you brought one today, you're under the wire. Um, everyone should have received the updated church directory. Please contact Mary. Uh, in the uh, office at PC office 140 at gmail.com if you have any changes to your uh, to the director. Um, following the service, there will be a celebration of Nancy's time here without a dump tank for her to sit in. So <laughs> we have all sorts of other things. So there was you know, pie growing and all sorts of other things. Uh, Carmela has put together a lovely box of lunches. Carmela, would you like to come up for lunch? Speak right into it. Good morning. Um, for everyone, so everyone who does not know me, I'm Carmela Payne, one of the elders here, and Andy and I are the mission chairs. And we wanted to send Pastor Nancy off with a lovely gift in her honor. So we will be, if you are so inclined, be collecting for Heifer International this morning to, um, to build an ark of $5,000 to send for animals, uh, for people to sustain themselves. In your box lunch, everybody got a little Heifer card so you can read more about it. But please um, see me if you have any questions. All right, Andy, thank you. Margaret, would you like to come up and read? I'll tell you, you have to put your mouth right on your mouth. Good morning, 
everyone. There you go. Okay. Uh, my name is Margaret. I'm also one of the elders here and chair of the membership committee. I see a lot of visitors. So if you're here for the first time or here, maybe you haven't been um, here for a while, but you came to uh, bed, uh, farewell to Nancy, um, would you like to stand so we can recognize you? Welcome everyone, um, and as Jim said, there's going to be a reception outside after um, service, so, um, you know, we'll make our way around to make sure we greet everyone. Thank you. Please join me in our call to worship. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Hope in the Lord. For with God there is steadfast love, and with God there is great power to redeem. Let us worship God.
Please join me in our unison invocation. Gracious God, good vibes are hard and they are on our minds. Help us to know the good vibe means God be with you and to know the new heart because that is a new heart. Push goodbye on our minds this morning so that we might focus on you and your incredible wonder in this next hour. And now take a moment to remember your sins and transgressions of this past week. The things you should have done that you didn't, the things you did do that you should have done. And join me together. Jesus, our Christ, you call us to serve and love our sisters and brothers, especially the poor, the needy, the outcast, and unwanted. But gracious God, we confess that we prefer to spend time with the rich and the popular and the fun, despite what you call us to do. Teach us that following your will, not our own wants, is the only way that really works. Forgive the fear or envy or distaste that get in our way and cause us to withhold what we might do. Help us to follow Jesus' example to make an office. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. How generous our Lord Jesus has been. Believe the good news. Jesus has given us his all. Trust the good news. We are loved and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
I need Joe and Tasha. Hey, I need Lori. Come on up. <laughs> I keep forgetting my little blue box here. <laughs> Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Takai by word and deed, with love and prayers? We do. Will you encourage him to know and follow Christ and be faithful member of his church? We will. You realize you all just agreed that if Tosh and Joe can't get to kind of Sunday school one Sunday, mm -hmm. they call any of you and you'll show up. <laughs> That's what they agreed to. Let's head to the baptismal font and we'll trust Karen and Pamela to follow us. Let's pray together. Great and gracious God. You have always guided and led and loved your people through water. It's important. It's essential to our very being, just as your love is essential to us. As you led the people through the Red Sea, as you baptized Jesus in the Jordan through John, as you nourished your people, you gave them drink in the wilderness. Nourish to come. Oh Lord, we ask that we would fill this water with your Holy Spirit, that it may support and sustain to be a faithful disciple, be a loving child and adult, and to grow closer to you every day of this life. These things we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, here's the defining moment. Will you let me go? <laughs> I'm going to make it to I, Joseph Johnson, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How wonderful it is that we should be called children of God, and you are. <laughs> Let's go back and meet all the yeah. godparents. Well, the yeah. aunts, yeah. the 
uncles. Yeah, you may never go to back. I head out to well, the well toss for a We got water all over. <laughs> It was almost 19 years ago, 18 years ago. And Matthew Stevens, I did that same thing for you. Come on up. Who else is in the congregation who is graduating from high school? I don't see Abby. I, come on, Matthew, I see you. Abby, Tyler, Maeva. Oh, Abby's home sick. Oh, no. Uh, mic is off. No, my mic is off. Matthew, you get to do the um, <laughs> the, the graduating senior class is is on my front to cry, Matthew. It's uh, oh, it's taking so much time. <laughs> <laughs> the graduating senior class, there are five of them, and I have the joy and privilege of baptizing four of them. And confirming for them, not the same four, but this is one I was able to do both. So I'm proud of you, Matthew. I'm so proud of who you've become and who you are. You are just a delightful young man. And the entire congregation is proud of you. So we present this graduating gift to you. And we're going to pray for you. So let's pray for you now. They're going to keep praying for you. Just remember the promises you made to Matthew when we baptized him. They don't stop just as you get to graduate from high school. Let's pray together. God, thank you for Matthew. Thank you for all of our fabulous high school graduates. Help Matthew to know not just how much we love him, but how much we love him. Help him to feel your presence as he goes to college, as he studies hard at Widener, and as he continues to serve you in love and faith. God, help him, help him to know you love him just the way he is. And so do we. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the river flow.
Please join me in our unison prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. As we come now to hear the word of God for our lives, let us first remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ when he said that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And a second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the laws and all of the prophecies. Our first lesson from the Old Testament is from Exodus chapter 13, verse 19. Listen for the word of God. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. Turning to the New Testament from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kaum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her 
something to eat. The word of the Lord. This is an incredibly special and, and bittersweet day. It's a day when we recognize I'll be going, and in two weeks, a new pastor will be coming. It's a day we recognize God's presence with us here now and in the going and coming. It's a day of, well, for me, at least a little sadness because I'll be missing you so much. I've come to love you all, and maybe some of you are sad as well, but the text from the Old Testament that Bill read, I, I think is important for us in this. Take the bones of Joseph with you. You remember Joseph, he of the amazing Technicolor dream coat. He had gone to Egypt, sold into slavery by his brothers, and risen in the ranks to be the equivalent of the vice president. There he saved the people of Egypt and his family from famine. He moved his family, 11 brothers and all of their kids and spouses and concubines into Egypt and they prospered. They prospered too much. They became a mighty and powerful bunch of folks and the Egyptians were intimidated. So they enslaved them. Many years passed, generations, and folks forgot who Joseph was. But Moses knew because God reminded him. God said to Moses, take the bones of Joseph with you. It was probably a mummified body, but the memory, the bones went back to Israel to be buried, to be remembered. Many of us do the same thing when we enter this sanctuary. Our hearts and our minds go to memories of past pastors, Dr. Nibriger, Dr. Van Dyke, to past music directors, to Sunday school teachers, to people who've been important to us in this congregation. We take figuratively their bones with us as we recall what they've meant to us and to this fabulous church and congregation. But they are just bones. They are just memories. We are not living entities in the life of this church anymore. We are not the focus. You see, the reality of true faith is that it lives in the present and in the future. It lives out God's love today and tomorrow. It doesn't look backwards to the past. It remembers the past. It takes the bones. But you can't live with the bones. You'll have a new, living, vibrant, exciting pastor with you in two weeks. I'm bones. I'm memories. Don't forget me. Please don't forget me. But I'm just the bones. Move to the living faith. We, we see that in today's gospel as we see Jesus coming and going. Luke uses his favorite literary device. He inserts one story into another. So we have the story of Jairus. And into that is inserted the story of the woman with the hemorrhage for 12 years. Jairus was, well, a lot like us, fairly rich, well-to-do, powerful, and used to getting what he wanted when he wanted it. He comes to Jesus and he says, listen, my little daughter is dying. Unusual for the day in the society that a man would care that much about a little girl. Children were kind of expendable back then, but but he loved her, so he comes to Jesus, and Jesus, sure, I'll come back to your house with you. I'll heal her, and off they go. And as they walk through the crowd, Jesus feels somebody touch the hem of his coat, and he knows power has left him. He knows he's healed someone, and he stops. 
he stops to talk to this woman who's come to him, who's been too afraid to speak to him, who just reaches out to touch the hem. And, and I, can, I can just picture with a smile on his face, he says, hey, I'm so glad you're healed. I'm so glad you're well. You know how much God loves you? It's going to be okay. Life is good. What wonderful, life-changing words of reassurance it had to be for that woman. But, but I can just see Jairus chomping his teeth. I can see his teeth grinding. Come on, Jesus. Don't dawdle. Let's get a move on. We got to get back to my kid. She's sick. She needs you. Come on, Jesus. Let's go. And as Jesus is finishing talking with the woman, word comes that it's too late. Indeed, indeed, Jairus' daughter has died. Can't you just imagine Jairus' feelings? Sad, upset, angry, angry Jesus, angry at himself, angry at God. We've all been there, haven't we? When, when God doesn't do what we want God to do, when God doesn't do it in our timing, not God's timing, we just say to ourselves, well, God's not at work. God doesn't care about me. And yet we see in today's gospel lesson, we see even, even when Jesus didn't know the woman was reaching out to touch him, he was at work. He was healing. In the going to Jairus' house and the coming of the woman to him, Jesus was healing. Jesus was helping. Jairus, I can just guess, looked at Jesus and said, well, it's over. Go on home. And then listen to what Jesus said to Jairus. Don't worry. Fear not, the new RSV says. Don't worry. Have faith. Only believe. Jesus says that to you and to me today in our comings and goings. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Don't worry. Only believe. Have faith. Jesus has been at work in this congregation for 135 years. Not just the last 19 years, 135 years. God is going to continue to work in this wonderful place. God continues to lead Jonathan in your session and the deacons as they move into new and exciting phases of ministry. Don't worry. Have faith. God is working your life. Even if you think Jesus is passing you by, oh no. No, in your going, in your coming, whatever's happening in your life, Jesus is at work. Jesus says to you and to me today, this day of change and change is hard. Jesus says to us, don't worry, it's going to be fine. Just believe, have faith. Hallelujah. Amen. God has so richly blessed us. It's incredible to have so many of you here today, and I'm so glad to see you. But we're able to keep the doors open and the lights on, pay our electric bill and our water bill because of your faithful contributions. If you did leave something in the offering plate by the door and you're able to, we'd be grateful if you would. If not, hey, we're just glad you're here, and so is God. Let's dedicate this offering, please. There's a unison prayer in our bulletin. God of history, we give you thanks for all the ways you remind us of your love and care. But we especially thank you for the opportunity you give us to give back to you and share your gifts with others. Help us to remember that that too is a blessing. Amen. For the very beginning, Molly and General Chesky were with us. When we got this started on either side of the show, Carolyn was with us. Uh, over here at GMX, which are a little time ago, and 
Mr. Jim Clendon to my left, and behind him, over by Angie, holding up the bottom of this whole thing. <laughs> Mr. David Nelson. That's a pretty good thing. This is uh, we're going country on the air. And Mr. Bob Bainey with the beer. And somebody who just passed over the white of those on the original line, Mr. Johnny Hunt. And session, I'm not asking, I'm just telling you, if it's after Wednesday, <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> For whom else do we need to pray? Derexa, of course, the...
Bonnie. Yep, yes. all of them going to find exciting places. Yes, Cheryl Ann in the back. Thank you. Actually, we need to keep Joe in our prayers more than anything. He's really struggling with the move. He can't quite get that. He's not on vacation. <laughs> Oh, well, things aren't going well. Thank you, Barb. I am I am so grateful to Barb for being here and taking care of me this weekend. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Turn this little wheel and Amanda Well, and Amanda. Okay, yeah. Oh, Barb, you're right. All those folks in Miami. Yes. Don't worry. Have faith. Thank you, Lizana. <laughs> okay, let's pray again. Oh, I lost Frank. Okay, Frank. Uh, I, I pray that uh, my grandson. We will yeah. keep Zechariah in our prayers, and it's good to see you back with us, Zach. Okay, let's pray together. Oh God, we look to you for signs of your presence. We don't doubt that you're here, for there's no place where you're not. We doubt rather that your presence can alter the circumstances of our present. You are unseen, but our loyalty is to the same. We trust things more than we trust people, and we have more faith in people than we have in you. Things and people are familiar and noticeable, while the movements of your spirit are subtle and sometimes not even discernible. Things and people, we believe we can control them, but your spirit blows where it will. And so God, we request a sign. Even though we've just heard it, we heard Jesus say to us, don't worry, have faith. We heard Jesus say, do not fear, only believe. But people have always demanded signs of Jesus. Remind us, gracious God, that Jesus brings healing. And we pray for that, for the Tang family, for Derexa and B, for the congregation, for Zechariah. Lord, there are many others who need your healing touch. Remind us that all we need to do is reach out to you and you heal us more quickly than we can even understand. Appear among us, gracious God, and stop our ears that we might hear you say it. Enlighten us. Help our minds to understand what you say. Help our hearts to know that we don't need to worry. You're in charge. We just need to believe that and to remember how much you love us. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The final hymn is on your bulletin insert. It is well with my soul.
succeeded except for Ryder and Rona and Bill. And you do have a You have a leaping litany. Yeah, come on up front. Come on up front, Ryder. Rona was the clerk here when I arrived, as well as on the PNC, which called me. Bill is our clerk now, and Rada, my beloved African connection. As soon as I got here, I realized that somebody from my beloved Cameroon, I knew God was sending me home, and Jason, what can we say about Jason? As I walk out the door, you all are going to say this. Best thing that woman ever did was find Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. All right, please join us in the litany for leaving. Nancy, we came because we invited you, but before long, we also felt that you had been sent. We thank God for giving you strength, wisdom, and grace over all these years as you served as our pastor. We thank you for confidently speaking God's work Sunday after Sunday. And has for being with us in mercy and joy, enabling Nancy to hear the good news of God's unfailing love. I thank you for allowing me to be part of your church family as a whole and for welcoming me into your individual homes and families. I am so grateful for the way in which my ministry has been accepted. You've been a blessing in my life in more ways than you could ever imagine. You have shown me the love of God in your words and actions. You will live in my heart forever. There are mistakes I've made. I ask forgiveness for the ways I have sinned against you. We receive your thankfulness. We offer you our forgiveness and accept that you now need to recover. We express our gratitude for your time among us. Your influence on our faith will not leave us at your departure. We ask forgiveness for the way we have sinned against you. I forgive you and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God and are part of God's plan for us all. We realize, we realize your code of ethics prohibits you from coming back to officiate at weddings or funerals, to offer pastoral care for members at the hospital, or to counsel any church-related individuals or families unless approved and requested by session. We respect your boundaries and do not desire to put you in an awkward ethical position. We do, however, look forward to lifting you up in prayer. Do you, members of the First Presbyterian Church, release Nancy from her duties as your pastor? We do, with God's help. Do you offer encouragement for her ministry as it unfolds in her retirement? We do, with God's help. Pastor Nancy released the First Presbyterian Church from turning to you and depending on you. I do with God's help. Do you offer your encouragement to Jonathan and the session for continued ministry? I do with God's help. Pastor Nancy, it's 19 years ago since you I dragged you to my seat out in front of the church during a church picnic. And 19 years after, I knew and I know that your faith was strong enough to dare us. God is hovering over you and will enable you to maintain that same faith as you go on to do the new thing called retirement. <laughs> so, as 
Pastor Nancy, we will hold you in our prayers as you retire. We pledge our support and love to you and wish you God's blessings. We all remember that the future rests in God's care. Thank you. Let us pray. Our loving God, as we reflect on this long and rich ministry of dancing among us, filled with laughter and tears, hopes and disappointments, we give you thanks for those cherished memories. Mostly, we acknowledge with deep gratitude that it would not have been possible without your sustaining grace and guidance. We thank you for the presence of your spirit at each step of the way. As you have been with Nancy here, we ask you to be with her in retirement, to give her peace and joy, and to provide for her needs. We also ask you to be with us. Help us to remember that Nancy pointed us not to herself, but to you, and that we can trust you to lead us into the future. We need your guidance, and we want to be open in your spirit. We want to be your people. We ask you to hold all of us as individuals, as families, and as a church in your loving care. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. And now, Harry, I have kids. Boy, do I have kids. <laughs> These keys um, to the church are for you to pass on to Jonathan. They've unlocked these buildings for many worship services, meetings, and events. The same Spirit of God will guide Jonathan as he opens worship services and events and meetings with these keys. Please give these to Jonathan with God's grace and blessing. Thank you. I will pass these keys to Jonathan so that he may lead us into God's new future for us. Thank you. And now, maybe, oh, don't go, Jason, I have to hug you before you go. And now, remember, don't worry, just believe. The God who loves you is in charge of our going and our coming. Well. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.
been the best 19 years of my life. That is the case. Thank you. God is good and God will continue to be good. Let's go eat. <laughs>